Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Dear friends and students As well as my youtube subscribers <laughs> Keep following my youtube channel okay Now this time I'm going to try to answer uh, I've got Okay let's see I've got 12 uh, questions for my students About language and culture Previously, we were discussing about a few concepts of culture and language. How do the two things uh, connect one another? Now, I'd like to share with you a few of my perspectives of my answers to uh, the following 12 questions. While I'm working in this area, I'd like to uh, tell you that I'm in Padang City of West Sumatra. This is the environment where I grew up since I was a little kid. So I have taken notes with me of the 12 questions that I received from my students. Now let me start. The first question is from Iqbal Romansyah. The question is, how can we enter into the culture of outsiders that we don't know about so that we can communicate well? Well, the answer of your question is that, firstly, we, you need to know what do you want to enter into the culture? And what, is, what do you mean with the word outsiders? Does it mean you want to meet with foreigners? or you want to meet with people who are completely different from you or you're going to meet with people who are strangers so you need to define that but i'm trying to uh, give my answers based on what i understand of your question uh, how can we enter into the culture firstly you need to learn how to know about them in this uh, modern day and age we live in the world of um, information technology i believe that you can search information online about that you can search information about hawaii or uh, a very traditional ethnic in an isolated area of a country so you can search about that as far as I understand, every human being is all the same and everywhere, but they might not be uh, very that different at all, if you would like to know it. I think this is quite peaceful, I'll try to talk to you in this area. And then, if you ask me, so that we can communicate well. So the point of communication is to understand the language of the people. If you don't know the language, then you need to try to express your thoughts with the language that you uh, can convey. If you meet with people who are completely different from you, then you need to start by introducing yourself and you need to uh, let yourself uh, swim or dwell into the culture. And it may take time slowly but sure but i believe that you can do it well now the second question is from melisha fitri the question is how to adapt in communicating for example the tone of speech of the minangkaba people who are a little high with the gentle japanese people often misunderstand them please explain so thank you okay if you ask me about the tone of speech, uh, yes, I agree that Minangkabau people have their high tone of speech when they speak. And Sundanese might be a little bit slower in terms of speaking. But and in the beginning, when you interact with this sort of people, you, need, you have to avoid giving your own judgment before you really understand the meaning that they want to convey if what they mean is fine then we basically um, try to 
stand on the shoes so if they utter a certain word what would that mean in that particular context i remind you that we need to avoid being so judgmental before we really understand the meaning of what someone has said in that kind of language especially with the Minangkabau or Batak well, um, you know, Batak people often have a certain word that may sound so harsh to hear uh, for example, they might use the word cow while in Batak it is fine to say cow but in Minangkabau language it is not fine to say cow the word cow or you which is if you use the word kamu would be fine the third question oh uh, i think i'd like to sit in this in this particular park <laughs> i like it here um, now i'd like to ask the third question is from nurhakiki putri lestari rasa diri dan ruang why that point becomes so characteristic of culture since I think it is very personal and subjective, so it cannot be used as a benchmark for a culture. Oh. So, uh, rasa diri dan ruang means that uh, someone or some people have the way how they express their mood and their emotion. If we have a word like happy, sad, gloomy in English, then we have a similar words in Bahasa Indonesia as well. We have that uh, gembira, sedih, uh, murung. In languages like Sundanese, um, there's a word like um, uh, kanya'a or um, riwa, <laughs> that kind of word. And Menangkabo have that kind of language as well. So again, language represents the meanings of culture so um, that the way people express their thoughts and ideas in their language re reflect the meaning that they want to convey and express in that in that particular culture um, fourth question is from Zilfia Anita Zilfia Anita asked me about language and culture the cultural value of young people dress in imitation of Europeans or the language mixed with English like in the big city of South Jakarta young people there when speaking a mixture of Bahasa and languages hmm, okay now if you ask me about the city of Jakarta then my answer would be that Jakarta is the capital city of Indonesia so in particular many information and access to technology can be derived in the capital city. Compared to many other places in Indonesia, uh, Jakarta is very crowded and uh, I believe that many expatriates and business people come to the city to have business with Indonesia. So if you see the way young people in Jakarta dress up, you might find that most of them do not represent uh, local cultures. It's already, um, I'm not saying combination, but I think it is very close to uh, adapting to new cultures. The actual culture of Jakarta is actually Betawi, um, and still uh, people in Jakarta respect the Betawi culture, although it is um, I would like to say that today it is used only as a ceremonial um, dances, songs and for weddings but still we need to appreciate that so see that's a difference between real life with the traditional life well Jakarta is a big city so it is um, the place where the people coming from different places of Indonesia and people from other nations meet there so that's that's the melting pot of Indonesia but still um, uh, and and the mixture of Basa and languages yes because uh, 
young people in Jakarta have high expectation toward new technology and new culture. Okay. Now, I'd like to walk again. I'd like to come to the fifth question. The fifth question is from um, Siti Nurfadila. Oops. Siti Nurfadila asked, is it just a habit that is done repeatedly in long-term cult culture, sir? For example, a habit that is done repeatedly but in the short term, can it still be said a culture? Well, um, habit is a habit, culture is a culture. You cannot call habit as a culture, but if you do it often and then it becomes your identity, then that habit can be called as culture. Basically, um, when habit is actually done individually, while well, culture is a combination or culmination of a particular group of people. Right? Yeah. So, um, when many people do that, now that is called as culture. Sixth question is from Yeni Sisterienti. Please explain what things we are not allowed to do when we come to a country. Well, <laughs> to be honest, uh, Yeni, I am not going to answer a question uh, generally, but I will approach it uh, in the sense of knowing that every country is unique, uh, in the, in especially when you talk about how one country is different uh, with another country. Indonesia, for example, is different from Malaysia, although we are neighboring countries. Indonesia is different from Australia, although we are also neighboring countries. So if you ask me what things we are not allowed to do, then I will say that universally that you need to learn to know um, the law of the country and um, universally you should not um, take properties of someone without their permission, for example, and you may not uh, steal. You may not destroy uh, properties. You may not express something that is not true. You may also not steal someone's identity and many things. So you need to learn the culture and the law of the country so you can avoid doing um, bad stuff in that country. Okay, so, so again, the word country a nation are different. If you talk about country, then it is about the political and geographical area of a certain place of a nation. Well, if you talk about nation, now that is about people. So it's it's it's, it's about different. I hope you get the idea. Now the seventh question is from Hamisatu Husna. What do you think about the different cultures and language in the world? Whoa, this is huge. I think that it is good to have different cultures and languages in the world so that we can understand and see that our life is colorful and you see the, the you see the plants around here? They're beautiful. Now that just show that we live in a very multi um, layers world. We live in the world that has many colors imagine if we only have one color that's bird yes um, imagine if we only have one color then that would be so boring um, we have uh, see this one this is a very nice uh, flowers white color and we have uh, leaves this is very unique so it's just like this just like this thing Oh, this one. This is also beautiful. Look at this one. This this flower. So this is nice, right? And I think it's good to have different cultures and languages in the world. That's why we learn each other. That's why we need to know each other. That's why we need to express our thoughts well. So 
we get to know each other and well for some reason yes i agree that english is an international language do you think so and arabic is the language of the world dunia and hereafter <laughs> i agree with it because that will help you understand the quran if you're muslim oh i like that sound of the word now the eighth question is from dodi saputra when black people are in american circles okay this is this is a tough question Dodi, but i hope that i don't answer it um, in a bad sense when black people are in american circles why americans blame black people do americans understand culture or how um, even though they have customs and culture what do you think about that sir oh, okay you asked me about black people um, as far as i understand black people of the united states are uh, actually the uh, hereditary uh, of uh, um, people coming from the african continent i have went to museum in Mi Mi missouri history museum with my friends while i was in the united states and i learned that uh, black americans were originally from africa so according to the race racial profile they are categorized as black compared to their other uh, friends in the u.s or white and they were actually caucasian now historically speaking because most black americans were derived from uh, were were being uh, put as a slaves long history before so uh, until then this kind of uh, racial problem still emerge um, but in general it's, it's only a matter of understanding one another it's a, it's 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 a way of understanding that this kind of racism is actually bad and it will ruin the united states still racial problem now if you ask me why americans blame black people well it's i don't think that that's blaming it's just the way how they um expressing their thoughts their ideas and their opinion uh, based on the race that they were categorized or belong to if you compare with indonesia we don't have that we don't have black we don't have white we don't have brown but if you if you go to the united states then you will be categorized as people of color now so that kind of that kind of language creates another dimension of problem social problem emerge between people as if um as if humans are different it's it's only skin deep right and do americans understand culture well they do understand culture but they think that they are part they are the center of the world so yeah this is um historically speaking it's it's uh, the way how they perceive uh, themselves they do understand culture they love art they create paintings they express their thoughts in many kinds of ways it's just just like us so they do but what well, social problems emerge in everywhere and then even though they have custom and culture what do you think about that Sir? yeah they do cus they do have customs and culture but we cannot determine that for entirely the ninth question is from rati senita Mulyani. every region has their languages and cultures also we know that indonesia is a multicultural country multicultural country how do we introduce the culture and language that we have while we only know the language and culture in our respective areas oh. how do we introduce the culture how do we introduce first um, you need to know your culture you need to know who you are you need to know what language do you speak you need to know uh, in what particular ways that you live your life like i told you before that the meaning of the definition is culture is a way of life 
So if let's say if you're Muslim and then you live in area of West Sumatra province, then you need to know that well that's the way how we we live our life. Right? So that's is um hold on. So so that is very interesting to really understand that kind of situation. Um, and the other way for you to introduce the culture is interact with people, show them uh, without having uh, a bad attitude. Do not judge people uh, based on the service. Try to understand people as they are. And you need to learn how to Mm, give authentic attitude and behavior as if they represent who you are and your culture if you live overseas now it, the fans question is from Tommy Pratama what is a good language according to an international perspective are there certain criteria as guidelines well if you ask me about good language um, well actually the definition is a bit vulgar every language is good uh, language becomes good when you use it properly when you learn uh, how to use words nicely to the people and it depends on how you express your ideas in the language hold on my microphone is slip off <laughs> so it depends on how you express uh, your thoughts in that particular language, right? Um, now, 11 question is Maulani al Manik. Some people from our country have forgot their own cultures when living abroad. What are some tips that can be taken in to maintain our culture when we are in another country for a long time? Good question. Um, I don't know for how long if you live there when when you were uh, still a child and you were let's say three years old you your parents brought you to the US for example then uh, yeah it might change your habit and cultures uh, for some instance but as long as you communicate with your friends in Indonesia then you still express your thoughts and you know how to deal with the differences then you still can cope with your own culture but if you if you have in your mind the idea that you don't like your culture and then you don't want to go back home and you think that you want to live in in the US and you begin begin to dislike the cult country of Indonesia then you will lose your culture yeah it, it's it's it starts from your mind if you dislike something no matter what it is then you will lose it well, in my experience, like like you said, um, my experience when when you live abroad, not only you will see many things and you will experience many things, but again, at the end of the day, it is you yourself who who, as the person who decides which one is best and which one is not best for you, not people. Although you live in a, in a society or community where you need to know how to deal with a different sense of a people, it is you yourself, you yourself as a, as a key to understand the environment. Nobody else will be able to teach you, oh, this is good, this is bad. No, it's, it's, it's you. Now, the first tip, <laughs> this is not a very uh, absolute or strong tip anyway, but this is just my opinion. You may, you may disagree or you may agree. The first tip is you st start knowing yourself, who you are, your culture. You can, you can see your parents, your family. Your family is the best determinator of who you are, your culture, where you come from, and then your uh, basic instinct as a human being. And the second one is that um, you should open the door for communication. Let's say, imagine if you live in Japan for a long time and 
in, even though your passport you are in Indonesia, but then you were born, you, you live in Japan for 10 or 15 years, then still open the door for communication back with Indonesians. Now, the last question is from Parawati. The question is, you used to live in the USA, and I would like to know that what is the best thing about living in the USA, and what culture you think we should follow? Um, uh, so, um, if that question, <laughs> that's my third brother, okay? Um, now, the better about this question is, so you should, you used to live in the USA, and I would like to know what is the best thing about living in the USA? Well, the best thing is that um, the USA is a country where most people coming from different background live together. I I never met uh, people from Africa before when I was a teenager. I never actually met people come actually from Arabic, from Arab countries and speaking Arabic right in front of my face. And I noticed that. Yeah, I learned that in my in my surrounding areas when I live in the States. I have danced with Iranian students. I joined with many international students in France while I was on campus. And that's one of beautiful experience that I enjoyed so far. And the best thing about living in the USA is that uh, the opportunities and chances are open for you when you are able to speak English. And if you can have a certain skills, for example, technology, IT, and if you are a good citizen, there are many opportunities for you out there. But it goes back to you. What is best for me might be different from other people who think that that's the best or even not the best. It's very different individually and per person. What culture you think we should follow? Well, if you live in Indonesia, your ID card is Indonesian, then you should follow your uh, culture because that's the best answer for me. If you are an Indonesian and you are a Minangkabau person, or even you are Sundanese or many other members of ethnic cultures in Indonesia, then that is the one thing that you should follow. Okay? Um, all right, I hope that I could uh, give you my answers through this video. I know it's a bit different for you to see me with this mask because this time is still COVID-19 pandemic season. I don't want to get this COVID-19. <laughs> I hope that you are safe. Uh, your family, your life, your friends and everything is going fine with you, inshallah. Thank you very much for listening to my explanation in this video. Um, you can ask me in the comment section if you have something to ask. I would be very happy to answer your question. Okay? Don't forget don't forget to subscribe. So here are the question. I will take notes on your question. Keep subscribing to my channel and then keep asking questions. I'm happy to discuss with you. Goodbye, my students, my friends and YouTube subscribers. Have a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.